Welcome to the home of the Forex Myth Buster. For many years now, I've been attending training courses. I've even been running training courses. I've been reading books, reading blogs, reading articles, and I find an awful lot of what's spoken about trading Forex is absolute rubbish. And because that's what I've found, I'm putting this video together to show you that not everything you hear about Forex trading is true. It's actually a lot easier than you may think. The first myth that I'm going to talk about is the degree of risk involved in Forex trading. I agree, it can be extremely risky if it's done incorrectly, but if you know what you're doing, it's not quite so bad at all. But who am I? Well, I'm Jeff Fitzpatrick, and I am the editor of Forex Trader Magazine. Forex Trader Magazine is an online publication available through the iTunes and Google Play stores and through various other places, including our website, and it's written by traders and for traders but particularly by home traders for home traders. So we've got a lot of experience and we know what we're talking about. So let's get into this. Well, you may have heard that Forex trading can be very risky. You might have heard that it's actually difficult and it's just for super brains. I mean, we hear about so many people in New York City and the city of London being paid crazy amounts of money to trade. Well, it must be therefore requiring of great brains. I'm gonna show you that's not the case. But what about time? A lot of people say, I don't want to trade Forex or anything else come to that because I've got to sit in front of the computer staring at the screen for hours on end. Well, I'm going to show you too that that's a myth and it's simply not true. But I hear you say, Forex trading is very expensive. Well, that's a myth too. It needn't be expensive and it needn't be risky and it needn't be difficult and it needn't take a lot of your time. So... The first part of this that I'm going to deal with is this one, that Forex trading can be very risky. Unfortunately, due to the law, I've got to tell you though that there are risks involved in trading of any types and also that you've got to take responsibility for your own actions. Of course, I don't know you. You could be a crazy person. You could be somebody that will do something absolutely stupid and of course there is therefore a risk. However, I'm going to try and show you that it just needn't be like that. So the legal stuff done, let's get on with the show. Well, how much risk is involved in Forex trading? Well, let's be clear, nothing in this life is completely risk-free. If you cross the road, if you drive a car, if you fly an aeroplane, if you swim, lots of things have got some risk. It's about minimizing that risk and getting it to an acceptable level. The question is, can we reduce the risks to a minimal and to an acceptable proportion? Well, I think we can. But I can fully understand how Forex trading has developed a reputation, a bad reputation for being risky. It comes down to the techniques used by almost 100% of traders and also the techniques taught by almost 100% of people who are providing training for traders. In fact, the only ones I know that uh, do what I do are the people that I've trained myself and many of them have gone on to be extremely successful. One of the main issues is a technique known as placing stop loss orders to reduce the risk. This is an absolutely crazy notion, and it works like this. If a trade goes against you, you then decide how much pain you are prepared to take, and then you take that pain. It's almost a guaranteed loss system. Well, we don't use stop loss orders. And I know lots of people will take a shock horror approach and say, wow, you don't use stop loss orders because the whole industry does that. And guess what? The whole industry has probably got it about wrong. You can actually protect orders in a much better way to a greater degree of protection in a lot more safe and less risky manner. The way I do that is with hedging trades. So any losing trade has got time and scope to come good. So we'll lock it down. We'll lock down any losing trade, giving it the opportunity to be closed at a profit. Wow, so that's very, very different. You simply won't come across that on any trading uh, course or in any book, article or blog that you might read, except those that come from Forex Trader Magazine. It's a simple procedure, actually. It doesn't actually take any great uh, skill to be able to hedge your trades. There's no additional cost to it. There's no additional software needed. It's just a very short, simple training session. 
and after 10 or 15 minutes anybody can actually do that so there's no need to take a stop loss and take losses on your trades in actual fact i would go so far as to say that if you choose not to you need never take a loss I say that because there are times when I choose to take a small loss in order to free up some capacity for trading, but very, very rare. In actual fact, I can't remember doing that now for several years. So how else can risk be reduced in Forex trading? Well, you can use a simulated trading account, also known as a demo account. And these use real life prices and therefore they give a very realistic trading condition and environment. An environment in which you can grow your skills, you can try different ideas out and you can prove to yourself that something works or doesn't work. And you needn't risk a single penny to be able to do that. So how else can we reduce risk? Well, we can place trades that only represent a tiny, tiny fraction of the capital that we hold in our account. In fact, my rule of thumb for placing trades is to make them 0.0006% of the capital that I have in a trading account. That means if I have a trading account worth a thousand pounds or a thousand dollars, I'm looking at trades which are going in at something like 60 pence or 60 cents. It's that small. And by doing that, I have lots of scope, lots of headroom to get out of trouble if I need it. And I can also place a number of trades. And when I say that, I mean I can place a number of trades that will run at the same time. Not many trading courses actually give you that option either. But we absolutely believe also that knowledge and experience are absolutely key to successful trading. And therefore, we recommend that training and ongoing development are taken. We see them as being completely essential. Whether from me, that training, or whether from anywhere else, I urge everybody involved in Forex training or thinking about getting involved in Forex training to take some training. Make your training and development an ongoing thing. That's one of the reasons why we produced the Forex Trader magazine, it does it absolutely perfectly at a minimal cost. We are talking about a couple of pounds or a couple of dollars per month. The Forex Trader magazine gives you then ongoing development with articles and news and features about different aspects of trading and also a big learning section. It also gives you the lowdown on books, uh, other magazines, on trading systems, on websites and so on. So training and ongoing development are essential and easily available. But the next thing that I want to bring to the table towards reducing risk is research. For example, here is a, a, a chart which shows the daily fluctuations over the period of one year in the pound dollar relationship. And you can see there are days and there's one here where the price has been down hugely at over 400 pips as we call them that would be four cents to your eye and here's another one where it's approaching that but look how few of them there are most of the action is really well concentrated in this middle area and we look at this very very closely and having done so now for several years i can tell you that for example we know that 70 percent of trading days will see the price only move by 75 pips, not 400, in one direction or the other, and then it will change direction. So imagine that. When we look at a trading screen, we know that there is a 70% chance that the price will move to a particular line where it's 75 pips and it change direction again. How easy does that make things? Well, we also know that on another 20% of days, it'll get to between 75 and 100. So basically three quarters of a cent to a full cent of directional movement. And then it'll change direction again. And we can wait. We can simply wait and see what happens here. So let the price go to 75. If it moves beyond that, there's a fair chance that it will stop when it gets to 100. And we can wait and see what it does. If it turns around and starts to go up again, we know what to do with the trade. 
if it continues to move towards 100, we can do that. And we can wait and then see, does it bounce off the 100 mark or does it keep going? And we know that in 10% of cases, it will keep going. And we can therefore just watch it again and decide if it's a third point that we want to change our direction in and to take some profit or to put a trade on. In actual fact, there are only a handful, four or five days per year that we call big days. Big days are when you get that huge movement. And normally they're to do with news, whether that's scheduled news, such as an inflation report or unscheduled news. As I record this, I'm not actually trading at all because this week we've got some huge news on the pound dollar relationship because it's the week of the Scottish referendum. So we'll see what happens with that. And I'll wait and see what happens with that before I get back into the market. Another piece of research which we use produced this. And this is a magical chart. I know it looks fairly simple, looks pretty straightforward, but this is what I call the traffic light. I know that if this chart, which is running across the screen here, which is just a, a graph basically of the price on a daily basis, and I know if it's currently located in this bottom green area, which it is, then that's an area that I only want to buy that currency in. If it was in the top area, as it was back up here, then I know it's an area that I only want to sell that currency in. And quite frankly, this middle area, the white area, although it's white, I call it amber, because in that area there, I would be prepared under the right conditions to buy or sell this particular currency pair. Now I've checked this back and I've checked it back for as far as records allow for years. And I can tell you with absolute certainty that any and every buy trade taken in the green area has turned to profit. Every sell trade to ever taken in this red area or pink area has gone into profit. And every trade, whether it was a buy or sell in that middle area, have gone into profit. Now that gives us a real head start. That actually says, wow, every single trade, if you buy at the bottom or if you sell at the top, it just makes absolute common sense will eventually come to profit. And if it gets a little bit unprofitable, we can hedge it and protect it while we wait for that to happen. Doesn't seem like too much risk to me. So let's just have a little recap here. First of all, we use hedging rather than a stop loss order to get out of trouble. And that means we normally get out in profit rather than just immediately taking a loss. Secondly, we use a demo account to learn how to trade and also to test ideas and to test things that we hear about. Thirdly, we use very proportionately small trades, tiny, tiny trades that you can't get in trouble with. You've got to control your greed at this point. Just take a little from the market as often as you wish. Next, we use training and ongoing development to keep up to date with the latest thinking to find out new things and also to keep in practice. And finally, we use research. The spreadsheet that I use to get that table with the pink and green on it has now got over 3 million cells on it that I analyze. It's an absolutely huge thing. So much so that my family bought me a mug that says on it, I love spreadsheets. So the risk can be reduced and it can actually be eliminated on many occasions apart from the risk of someone doing something completely stupid, the equivalent of stepping out in front of a car on the road. But can we prove that this works? Well, we can. We can at least show you that it has worked and that it's continuing to work as we speak. Forex Trader Magazine started a live trading experiment and it's run since January 2014. We're now in September 2014 and it's run therefore for 35 weeks. And in that time, no trade has actually made a loss. I can also tell you that no trade had to be hedged against a loss. But some of those trades, using the conventional systems of stop loss orders, would have absolutely been closed and would have turned out to have been a loss. So it is working so far. And we've got a good profit on this. So after 35 weeks, it's got a 96% profit, not a single loss. I can also tell you that that profit has been made 
in just 11 trades. I'm not sat watching the screen all day long, but we'll come to that in a later video. If you'd like to check out the latest information on this demonstration, you can do so. You don't even have to buy the magazine to do that. Just go to our website, www.forextradermagazine.co.uk, that's important, .co.uk, and forward slash FTM hyphen blog. But if you just go to that website, one of the tabs there is uh, the live trading experiment. Have a look on that. It gets updated at least once a week, quite often more than once a week, and you can see how we're doing with it. So, hopefully, I have now clearly demonstrated that forest trading does not have to be very risky. And in my next video, I'm going to show you, hopefully just as convincingly, that it's not difficult either. So, register your interest below, and if you want to see that next video, I'll send it to you in a couple of days. Thanks very much for listening.